Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So a lot happened over the weekend and a lot of it had to do with text-to-video and Xeroscope XL, which is an open source model that lets you make text-to-video generations that look basically almost as good as Runway ML Gen 2 in a lot of cases. It's not quite there yet, but it's incredible what happened in like the course of a week. So a lot of people have asked me, how do I use this? And there are two answers for this. So there are answers if you have GPUs or you have a GPU that's powerful enough to actually run this. And then there are answers if you, you know, have no interest in running a GPU or just have a laptop and you just want to mess around with this for a bit. And this solution is predominantly meant for people who just want to try it out online and not deal with their own hardware or tweaking and tuning kind of the hacked implementation that makes Xeroscope XL and Xeroscope 567W work on a local machine with automatic. This option is from a company called Replicate and a developer who shared some of his workflows in Replicate called Jesse Andrews. He has a number of other models. Um, he has you know, a multi-control. He actually has an automatic 11.11 implementation as well. And then he also has one of the more commonly accepted Xeroscope XL implementations. And what's cool is since it's all running in Replicate on an NVIDIA A100, it actually combines all the steps. So technically there are fewer options to mess with and there are fewer things to screw up when you're using it on Replicate. And you can see he has a few examples that he's generated. For some reason, a lot of people really like making clownfish with this. And I think the model might favorite, I don't know. But anyway, this is really cool because, in my opinion, a much better interface than uh, the Gradio-based interface in Automatic 11.11. And also, it's pretty cheap. I think um, you get eight free tries with this. After that, it's maybe 12 cents per run. And what's cool is this combines the uh, 567W model along with the Xeroscope V2 XL model. To be clear, the first step is truly text-to-video, and the second step is more of a video-to-video -video upscaling. It's just transposing the input prompt and negative prompt. Although this looks like a basic interface compared to Automatic 11.11, it's really all that you need. So you still have all the options for how many frames you want to make, um, how many inference steps you'd like. And the biggest thing that I think sets apart Replicate when you're messing with text-to-video is that in some cases, it is a better experience than using a local GPU. Like for instance, my 3090 is actually not powerful enough to generate full resolution 1024 by 576 pixel zero scope XL outputs. It can barely do the, uh, the 576 by 320 pixel outputs and it's redlining at you know 24.6 gigabytes of VRAM. So what's cool here is you're spending way less money, you know, a few, probably a few dollars over the course of an hour or two. You're getting better performance, you know, a full-fledged A100 just for you. The model running the first time can be a little slow since it has to warm up. However, once it's warmed up, it's very fast. It's fa certainly faster than my 3090 and, you know, having to go through the steps of swapping the model, which you have to do in automatic. And the results you get are great. You can download them if you like them, you can tweak them if you don't like them, and it's all happening in one step. The other reason I like this is, although the results of Runway ML are still in many cases a little bit better or cohesive than the results coming out of Xeroscope XL, they're pretty close. And the cost of even doing this on Replicate and having this very nice interface and renting a GPU right when you need it is still about half the cost, usually lower than that, of actually buying a, an account at Runway and uh, using Runway ML Gen 1 or Gen 2 to make videos. Uh, a lot of those are still charged per generation, and generally speaking, Replicate, you're only paying for the time that you're actually running the GPU. You're not paying for how long you have the uh, dashboard open. You're just paying for you know the time of the GPU thinking and giving you data. So I think that's a pretty compelling use case for this. It's also way cheaper, uh, even just for a few hours, than even you know, approaching you know two to three percent of the purchase price of a used RTX 3090 on eBay. I still think that's the best choice of a GPU for anyone trying to do stuff locally. And if you're fine tuning or you're doing other stuff, you know, if it's very advanced, that's great. The interim kind of option here is going to somewhere like TensorDoc. Uh, they're a great GPU provider. I know some people who work there and you know, getting a GPU VPS and then setting everything up. And of course that's inherently a bit more technical. Quite frankly, based on the pricing, people who've shared automatic 11.11 implementations on Replicate, those are interesting to me. But for me, like, I, I still like just having the ability to actually dig into a console and do that, but that's me. And uh, if you're less technical or if you just wanna mess around with these models right away, I cannot recommend Replicate enough. So I've linked below, um, I've given credit to Jesse Andrews with his GitHub below. Definitely follow Jesse on Twitter. He's done a lot of cool work uh, even over the last few months. And yeah, so if you want to run Xeroscope XL online, 
for just a few dollars or for free if you only want to mess around with it, you know, maybe like eight to 10 times. This is how I recommend you do it. The link to this replicate space is below. And if you want to see uh, the automatic 1111 guide, that's coming very soon. And we're also going to do some comparisons of the 567W model to the XL kind of scale up because it's interesting how sometimes it works really well and sometimes it's kind of hard to tell the difference between the two. And hopefully we get um, some further updates from the Xeroscope team later this week. So as always, I hope you learned something in this video and we'll see you in the next one.